I've already taken a look at the Steven Rails mod that adds a whole bunch of different rails, monorails, and a few different decorative and functional blocks. But since my video on it, they've had a really big update, adding a whole bunch of new stuff that we're going to take a look at today. Now we're not going to touch on the old stuff, so if you want to see that video, it is linked down in the description below. First, we're going to take a look at the new tracks added in the Steven Rails update, which the first of these is going to be our Tylus track. Now the tireless track is essentially a regular track but without all the ties in between, which I think looks really clean. And I think it'd be used in a lot of different builds, like futuristic builds or just kind of builds where you want to have kind of this like tireless look in your train. The next one of these is going to be the Ender Train track, which is essentially like a regular tracks, but now adding an Ender variant. And now we get on to some of the more weird and special tracks. So before we've had our regular tracks of all the different variants, but now we have a narrow variant and a wide variant, which essentially means we now have a four wide and two wide track to go along with our traditional three wide track. The really neat part about this is each new track actually gets its own new type of bogey. So we obviously have our little cute little mini one wide bogey, which just looks awesome. Got our traditional one here. And now we have this like four wide giant bogey, which just looks incredible. Um, and I think it'd be used for like giant builds where you have to move a lot of stuff in a big contraption, but yeah, these are awesome and I think absolutely game changing to the game and I could see using all of these in different kinds of builds and I'm really glad that we have them in the mod. Now with that said, I do have one small complaint about the narrow and wide tracks and that's just the implementation they went with. We have our regular tracks and then we have the wide variants and then the narrow variants and they each have their own different crafting recipes. So narrows, you start with the slab, you cut it, you deploy it, you press it and the wide ones, you take a pre-made track you cut it, you deploy it, and then you press it. But the problem with this is then you have three of each variant. So if you had a chest that's storing all these up, it would get really filled up really quick. And so what I'd kind of rather see is just being able to toggle. So like if I had a hotkey where I'd press a button and then suddenly this turns into wide tracks and then I press a button and now I'm using narrow tracks. And I think that might just be a slightly cleaner implementation of this where you don't have to have three variants of each of the different blocks. But like I said, small complaint, I'm just really happy to have these new variants of the track. The last track we're going to talk about today is probably the coolest addition we've had to the mod, and believe it or not, has already been in today's video. You just haven't been able to see it, and that is the Phantom track. So essentially what this is, is it's a normal track that you can place, but when you're not holding the track in your hand, it's completely invisible. And I'm sure a lot of you can already think of a lot of really cool uses for this. Not only could you make a kind of flying train, but you could use it if you want like a fully block built train and track, you could use the Phantom track for that. You could also use it for planes and boats really nicely. And as a quick little showcase of just how cool this is, I went ahead and I have this little plane up in the air in this little boat. And what this is doing is really simply, all I've got going on for the boat is a track sitting underwater um, and obviously we don't really need these like supports anymore so you can really quickly and really easily build a little train system that you can actually drive around with a boat which is super cool and it's so helpful to be able to do this um, versus having to like go all the way down underneath the ocean and build a track if you really want it to be hidden away and kind of like look like it's an actual boat floating in the water. And for the plane, we've got the exact same thing going on where we want to cross this gap. All I've got is a track in the middle, and then I can go ahead and take control of the train, or the plane, I should say, and you can see it'll actually kind of fly. And honestly, this is just absolutely game-changing. Be able to have tracks that you can't see. Uh, there's so many possibilities you can do with it, and even just having planes, being able to fly around your world. You can set up kind of like automated systems to go back and forth on your base. You can have passenger aircraft. You can have a you can have airplane. You can fly around with junctions in the air and stuff. And it's sweet. It's it's something that I think I'm definitely gonna have fun playing around with in the future. And actually, there's one other thing to mention about the Phantom Tracks if you're a fan of cursed Minecraft, and that is you can use them to make <laughs> rounded slopes or paths which just looks really ridiculous, but I mean, you can you can do it. So all I did to make this is I had my phantom tracks coming up to a slope, and then what I did is I just grabbed a slab of my choice. So we can just go ahead and we'll grab a waxed cut copper slab, and then you actually, it'll just kind of fill it in, 
And when you're not looking at the tracks, it'll just be a really smooth surface, which looks really silly. And collision doesn't work with these. So all I did is I put slabs kind of like underneath as it went up. So it kind of feels like you're colliding with it. And it's not perfect, but I mean, it definitely works. And it looks really silly. I don't know if I'd ever actually use this in any builds just because of how like absolutely ridiculous it looks. Um, it's not too bad like if you want to like create a path and then use it to kind of like lay it out on the floor. But as soon as you hit the slopes and it starts being a curved surface, it's 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 definitely something interesting. And yeah, I definitely think there are probably uses for it, but it just looks too silly for me. With all the new rails we've got in the update, we also have two new decoration blocks as well. That is the long smokestack and the vent block. The long smokestack works just as all the other smokestacks. It just has a new kind of like longer texture or model for anybody who wants that. What I'm thinking is it might look really nice on walls. Yeah, no, not really. <laughs> I was thinking like the walls would like fully connect, but it doesn't. So I don't know. I'm sure there's definitely some uses for the long smokestack. It can't be placed either way. Um, which is pretty neat, and I think could have to use some uses. But the other block is actually pretty cool, and that's the vent block. So what the vent block actually does is it allows steam or smoke to pass through it. So our smokestacks, the smoke will go right through it, which is really cool. And also, if we get a campfire, the campfire smoke will also go right through it. So I think this is a really helpful block, and it'll be kind of cool to have. Well, it looks like I might be mistaken about the campfire. So if it's one block above, it seems to go through just fine. But if it's two blocks above, it seems most of it, if not, oh yeah, all of it is getting trapped. So I guess if it's a campfire, it's got to be one block above. It actually looks like with this other smokestack, um, it is kind of getting caught up. Most of it's going through, but some of it is getting caught up enough to kind of leave a big ball. But I bet if I put it at the bottom here, one block above... It should be just fine and go right through. Yeah, and that looks like that is true. So I guess one block above, you're fine. And then with these, you can go with a space in between. So two blocks above, but you're going to have a small buildup. Now, these are kind of cool to have, but there's still a block you can see through. So what I would almost rather have is if you could have any block here, and then you can take some sort of vent pane or trap door, so I could place like one here and one here, and that would automatically vent the smoke through like however many blocks I have here. And I think that would be a more interesting implementation because then if I want my smoke down here, but I don't want my train to look like it has smoke coming out here, that's still something I could do by using some sort of trapdoor or other small, not so intrusive item. So we've talked about the coolest part of this update, which I genuinely think is the Phantom Rails, but... We haven't talked yet about what the most overpowered thing that this mod adds to the game. And that is going to be the remote lens, which lets you automatically see through a conductor's eyes, which is just crazy. So essentially what you can do is you can make a new conductor. And if you give him goggles, then you can take a new remote lens and bind it to that conductor and then essentially see through his eyes. So you right click on your lens to see through it and then press shift to exit the view. And it's, it's crazy. You can just like from like anywhere around, you can see these guys. Now this is super helpful if like you are expecting a train to come in or you don't know how long it's gonna be for that train. Um, you can pop in here and see, oh, okay. It's at whatever station or it's so far along and you can kind of see where it's at. It's also just really useful for checking in on stuff at your base. Like what I could imagine using these guys for is I build a new assembly line. I bind my guy to a remote lens. I come over here. I name it. We call this assembly. And now like I'm like, oh, I wonder how that new assembly line is. Click this. I can go take a look at everything, make sure it's all running right. And I think that is going to be incredibly helpful. And I've been kind of close to these guys, but even if I fly super far away and I just kind of keep going and keep going into a point where like that area isn't even really being seen, I can still see through their eyes, which is crazy. Um, I don't know if it works if I go all the way into like unloaded chunks, 
So if I go like miles and miles away, but even from all the way over here, which I would imagine those chunks are definitely unloaded, I can still pop into their view. Yeah, like, yeah, if you look, it's loading the chunks whenever I go back and forth. So from literally anywhere, you can see through your eyes. Wait, can you walk around? Okay, I'm sorry. I just realized I've only ever tried it on <laughs> the guy on the train. And if he's not on the train, you can literally walk around, go into F5. Do you have any kind of inventory? No. Okay, no. So your inventory is still linked to your player, but <laughs> look at this little guy go. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, I'm assuming you can't. Okay, so you can't interact or do anything with any blocks, but yeah, you could totally have this little guy kind of watching your base and run around to see what's going on. That's so cool. Okay, so I said this wasn't the coolest feature. I said that was a Phantom Rails, but knowing that you can run around with him, what do you guys think? Do you think this is the coolest feature or do you think that still remains as the Phantom Rails? Let me know down in the comments below because I'm really curious to see what you guys have to say about that. And the final thing added in the Crate Steam and Rails update are the Brass and Andesite track switches. Essentially what these do, it's pretty simple. What they allow is for you to automatically switch tracks. So typically without a switch, when you're driving down the track, um, you're always gonna go forward unless you actively press left or right. So if you're not paying attention, you're always gonna go forward. Plus, if you have an automatic train, it's always gonna go to whatever station is next in the most efficient way. So let's say we have a track that kind of like converges down over here, right? So these two tracks come together and there's a station here. It will always go down the center path because that's the quickest way to that station. But let's say for whatever reason you want it to come down over here on this path. Track switches would allow you to automatically control which path it takes to get to that endpoint, which I think is really interesting and could add a lot of new ways to kind of construct your factories and your tracks. Now, with that being said, one thing to keep in mind is when you have a switch down, let's say I want to go to the left track, I actually can't. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to hold left and forward and it's actually not going to allow me to do that. And we'll actually see a little pop-up down in the bottom corner. It'll show us what track is currently selected. And so you can see it's locked. So we can't go left or right. We can only go straight. Now to actually place these, you'll see a little bounding box whenever you're holding the andesite or brass switch. You're gonna right click on that. And then you're gonna right click to place it down. And now there's a few different ways you can control this. First, you can control with buttons. So you can see that, change it to go left. That button changes it to go right. And then that button changes it to go straight. And this does um, differ based on how you place it. So here I placed it facing the other direction. And now this button makes it go right. And this button makes it go left. But just because I think that's silly, it's <laughs> not how it should work. Um, I'm going to place it in this orientation so we can kind of control it that way. The other way to control it is we can right click it. So if we right click it, it'll turn one direction. And then if we shift right click it, it'll turn in the other direction. So we can manually control it. Plus one thing to keep in mind is you can always take your little conductors and have them stand in front of the button. And if you're wearing the same colored hat, you can look at them and they will press that button. So you could kind of have a remote little way to activate it with your conductors. Now, with that being said, another way to remotely activate it is you can shoot them with a bow and arrow. And if you can hit it, <laughs> it will toggle through all the different orientations. So if you're coming down and you want to change it, that is one way to quickly change which way it's going to go. And the Endosite and Brass versions work exactly the same. They just have a different model. So here's that Brass version instead, which I think looks pretty cool. But let's be honest, the Andesite version just looks cooler. I like how it's too tall. I like the little red signal that kind of shows you which way your train is going to go. And the last thing to note is that you can actually use a comparator to get a redstone signal out that'll have different power based on which direction you're going. So it'll be one if it's left, zero if it's straight, and two if it's going to the right. And one thing to keep in mind as well is if you add a fourth track, it'll kind of pick between the three tracks. So you can see now we're going to the left, to that one that's kind of to the right, and the one that's all the way to the right. So it really can only support 
three tracks at a time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little peek into the latest Steam and Rails update. I really love all the new features, and I definitely think this is one of the, if not the most must-have mods if you're doing a mod pack with the Create mod. It's It had so much really cool stuff, and it's just so much fun to play with, and I can't wait to kind of dig into this and survival and play around with all the different features actually like in game instead of just checking them out in creative and that's going to be it for today in the meantime you guys keep on creating some awesome stuff Bye bye <laughs>